Hey everyone, welcome to I Dream of Homestead. I'm Josephina, and today we're gonna to be in my kitchen hanging out. I'm not sharing a recipe because this is my very first time making tamales. I have joined my mom in making them several times since I was a kid, but I've never actually done it by myself. And so this makes me uber nervous. I did my best to look at as many recipes as I could um, and then just kind of take from a bunch of different recipes and just kind of mush it up together to make it my own. So. Bear with me. I'm gonna take you guys along for this ride. You guys are just gonna hang out with me in the kitchen today. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so the first thing I did last night, I took my corn husks and I put them in bowls of hot water um, and I put other bowls of water on top to weigh them down so that they would stay under. Um, and that's just to soak them and soften them up. And then in the morning when I came out, I flipped them and put the weight back on it. I get mine from the Latino market nearby me. Um, the packaging looks like this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take all of the water out, give them a good rinse and put them back in the bowl. Listen guys, again, you guys are just hanging out with me in the kitchen today. So you're gonna have to excuse all of this morning's dishes as I work in here. I'm a real person with a real kitchen. Aside from giving them a really good bath, this is the what I'm trying to remove the most. All of these little hairs that are all over them so that those don't end up in the masa. Okay, so they're all washed when I set them aside. And then this morning, um, after I did the flip on those, I put this chicken to cook. It's a whole chicken. I put in a whole onion, some bay leaves, lots of garlic, like an entire head of garlic, um, a bunch of peppercorns and some salt so that that could make a stock while cooking the chicken for me. Now I'm gonna strain this out. The handle on my strainer broke, so I'm just gonna stick it in the bowl. Don't judge me, you gotta work with what you got. Next, I'm going to shred this chicken. I'm taking all of the meat off of the bones um, and the skin too. And I'm just gonna transfer all of the meat into my mixing bowl so that I can put it on my stand mixer and have the mixer do the shredding for me so that it's a lot quicker. And a tip for keeping your kitchen from becoming a complete hot mess while you're working um, on any meal or even these like really big ones, um, is to wash your dishes as you go. You see right behind me the pot that I used to cook this chicken. I immediately washed it. One, I am gonna use it a little bit later when it comes time to steam the tamales. But also, if I wash some dishes as I go, then I don't have a massive pile up at the end and I'm not overwhelmed by a really messy kitchen. I also put away ingredients as I use them so that everything isn't sitting on the counter like a complete explosion. All right, I've got a bunch of skin and bones in here, so I'm gonna strain out the juice that's sitting at the bottom of it, and then I'm gonna put the bones and the skin in this container so that I can freeze it and save it to make a bone broth later. And now this is gonna go into my stand mixer to get shredded. The next thing I'm gonna work on are the chiles to, for the sauce that are gonna go into the masa. And then I'm also gonna work on the sauce that's gonna go in with the chicken. So when I tell you guys that I pull a bunch of different recipes, these are literally different ones that I pulled bits and pieces out of and just started writing down the ingredients and then erasing and going through with how much I think would be better. That's literally the best way to go about making your own recipes. So first what I'm gonna do is the sauce that's gonna go into the masa. So I just pulled out some ancho chile, which is dehydrated poblano peppers. And then I'm gonna do some guajillo chiles. And because I'm gonna need those again for the sauce for the chicken, I'm gonna leave the bags on the side instead of putting them away already. Okay, so I've got a little bowl right here. 
and I'm going to remove the stems and then take out all the seeds that are on the inside. While I am working on this, I wanted to share with you guys the reason why I'm making these tamales. So today is November 2nd. I don't know when you guys are gonna see this video, but it's November 2nd, so it is the other los muertos. And this is my first official year celebrating it. I have my ofrenda set up, which I will show you guys in a little while. Um, and I am going to make them tamales. And I'm gonna put some on the ofrenda for them tonight so that they can eat with us while we are eating. It's, it's bittersweet to do this because they are no longer with me, but I am proud to be able to try and carry on a tradition of cooking these meals that are so important. Um, and so foundational to our culture. And I know that they are standing in this kitchen with me right now, hanging out and making the bummers with me. And it chokes me up, but it makes me really happy. Now that the stems are removed and I took all the seeds out, I'm going to give these a rinse and then put them in a pot of water to boil. While those are going, I'm gonna prep the other ingredients that are gonna go into the blender with it. So I'm gonna use half an onion. And then here I have a whole head of garlic that I took apart. I'm gonna use half of those for the masa and the other half for the chicken sauce. Also, quick lesson on how to say tamales. I will put the word tamales down here on the screen for you guys. That is plural. That's when you have more than one tamal, but when it's just one that you're eating, it's just tamal, not tamale. Tamale is not it. <laughs> so I've got it all peeled and now it's going into the blender. Add some of the broth from the chicken stock that I made into this so that it helps it to puree nicely. So I had someone recently comment on one of my videos, the one video that I have that like really took off on my channel um, where I'm making like refried beans and Mexican rice. Um, I had someone comment on there that I am so disorganized and scattered in the kitchen that I should not be allowed to have a channel. To that person. But I think that that's something that makes, um, that makes people cooking more relatable is seeing the process um, and how it's not like this perfectly seamless task that each step has to be done in a specific way and it's so organized because that's not how normal kitchens go. You just kind of work with what you've got, where you're at, and this is how I cook. I, As I make one thing, I think about the other thing that I'm gonna need and if that current step is gonna help with another part of the meal, then I'll work on that, like this onion and garlic. I don't need it yet, but to save myself some time later, I'm just gonna go ahead and prep it now especially since I'm waiting for these chiles to finish softening up. When you're waiting on one step to finish in the kitchen, instead of just kind of standing there and waiting, move on to something else that you could do that'll help you get ahead. Um, whether that's doing some of the dishes or working on another step for the recipe. Now I'm also gonna prep the chiles for that chicken sauce since I've got the garlic and the onion and those are really close to being softened. They're not quite there yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of this part too. And for those of you who haven't heard me say it before in another video, Guajillo chiles are not spicy at all. These chiles are the signature. I need my sauce to be red, so I need to add something to it, chile. This is the go-to for coloring any sauce that you need red. I've got all those chiles de-stemmed and de-seeded, so now I'm gonna move on to prepping the tomatillos. I'm just gonna peel them and wash off that like stickiness that's on them. I've got all that prepped for my next step, so now I can blend up the chiles. Let me show you guys what that looks like. Just like that. And that'll go straight in here. I rinsed out the blender and I'm gonna set it aside because I'm gonna need that in a little while. Next, I'm gonna boil those tomatillos that I had already washed. So I've got this pot of water, I'm just gonna put those in there. All right, I'm gonna start prepping for the masa. This is the part that I'm most nervous about. 
I'm hoping it comes out good. I'm gonna move you guys to a different area so that you can see better. So funnel me to another area of my kitchen. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get my mateka. I'm so nervous. <laughs> And then some baking powder to help them kind of puff up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna mix this with my hands just to make sure the salt and the baking powder gets spread out all around the masika before I add in the wet ingredients so that I don't end up with like clumps of salt in specific areas and baking powder in other areas. I want it to be as even as possible. In my last video, um, I talked about just internet bullies and how difficult social media is. And I just wanted to say that on the other side of the coin, the amazing thing that I am learning through social media, especially TikTok, oh my God, you learned so many things from other people. Something that I am learning is that I am so not alone in this feeling that I have about being um, a first generation Mexican American or whatever first generation American you are. Um, just being the child of immigrant parents, how much in common I have with so many other people who share the exact same feelings where we know Spanish, we know a lot of the culture, but because we weren't raised um, deeply embedded in it the way other people got to, we kind of feel lost. Um, we feel like we belong to this culture and we feel like we belong to our other culture, the American culture, but neither side embraces us fully. There are some children of immigrants whose parents, um, not only were they raised in an area where they were surrounded by others um, of their culture, but their parents like worked really hard to embed that culture in them. Um, and so there's a lot of judgment that comes from them. So it's hard putting yourself out there doing these kinds of things because you're afraid of the judgment that you're gonna get from your own people and it sucks. But I am so thankful for social media and teaching me that I am so not alone in that. And I hope that a whole lot of you other first, second, third generation Mexican Americans are watching videos like mine and saying, if she can do these things, so can I. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the exact same amount um, of stock as I did of the Maseca. I'm only gonna start with half of it for now because I don't wanna overdo it because again, I am terrified of messing this up. And then I got from my local um, Hispanic supermarket, they make chicharrones and things like that there. So all of the lard that comes out of that, they save it and they sell it in containers, which is a lifesaver because this is so full of flavor. When you smell it, it smells like chicharrones. And so I'm gonna use it in here, but you can use, if you don't have access to stuff like this, you can use um, vegetable shortening in here. I'm only gonna add in half of this for now. So I'm just taking my hand and I'm going in here and squeezing it, like squeezing it through to help mash all those ingredients together. Okay, so now that I worked in all that stock, I'm gonna add in some more. You guys, it smells so good. <laughs> it smells like my mom's. <laughs> you guys, my mom could win every contest in the world with her tamales. I have literally never tried anybody whose tamales are as good as my mom's anywhere that we've gone, anyone who's made it. My mom is just, hers are superior. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> this is honestly really bittersweet, making these by myself. <laughs> not that I'm not already a grown up because I'm 32, <laughs> but like, when you do things like this that you always did with your family growing up, it just makes you feel even more like an adult to do it by yourself. All right, we're getting there. This feels still kind of dry for me. I know it looks really moist, but I need it to be nice and moist so that it doesn't dry out and crack 
while it's cooking. Plus, once I'm done mixing all of this, I'm gonna let it sit so that all of the maseca really absorbs that chicken stock in there and moistens it completely. <laughs> I just gave some of the dough a taste. It's so perfect. All right, I've got it the consistency that I want. <laughs> so now I am going to let this sit covered and I am going to move on to cleaning up some of this and finishing up that chicken. Okay, so I had to take a little break so that my kids could prepare their lunch and go outside to eat it. So while they were doing that, I took care of pretty much all the dishes except for that one that you see in there. I took the tomatillos out of the pot. They were already cooked. So they're in here with the onions and the garlic and I'm gonna blend that up. Um, I also did um, the chiles in here. So those are ready to go once I've got the tomatillos blended up. And it clearly needs it. So I'm gonna take some of this stock. I went ahead and poured it into all these containers that I can freeze. I've got the tomatillos blended and now I'm gonna add in the chiles. So I didn't do the tomatillos and the chiles in the same pot just because they cook at different times. So one would be done before the other. And this way I have more control over it. So now all the chiles are in there with the tomatillos and now I'm gonna blend that up. And I just realized, see, this is why this isn't gonna be a recipe video like my other ones are. I forgot the oregano and thyme for this. So got some dried oregano, I'm gonna add that into it. I need to go harvest what I have out there and dry it because I had almost a full jar and now I'm basically done. And then also salt. And I don't want to put in too much just yet. So I'm just going to put in a little bit. Now I'm going to blend this up. That's what that looks like. So while that was blending, I did in another pot over here, or in a pan, I did some oil in here and it's been heating up. I'm going to cut it back on because I could smell the oil, which means that it was getting too hot. So now, this is gonna sizzle and pop and that is totally normal. I'm going to now cook this so that the raw onion and garlic that are in here get cooked before I add the chicken into it. Okay, so I'm gonna let this cook for a little while and then I'll add the chicken in. It's a pretty thick looking sauce. I don't know if you guys can tell, um, but I want it to be thick because this is gonna be the filling inside of the tamales. And if it's too watery, then that's gonna go into the dough and then you're gonna have mushy tamales. So to avoid that, I'm gonna keep the sauce thick. And then if I need to, once the chicken's in, I can add in some stock. And while that's working, I'm gonna take care of dishes again. been cooking for several minutes so now I'm adding in the chicken and I'm gonna give this a try and see how I feel about it I definitely needs pepper and it could use a touch of salt. And honestly, I'm not gonna worry about it now, but the next time that I make it, I'm definitely gonna use more tomatillos in it because I want a little bit more of that acidic taste in there. And since I want a little bit of that acidic flavor, I'm gonna add in some apple cider vinegar. 
Like I said, the next time I'm gonna do more tomatillo so that I get this flavor from the tomatillo. All right, let's see. I think it needs another tablespoon of vinegar and just a little bit more salt. Hopefully third time's the charm. Let's try it again. Yep, that's it. That's the flavor I needed. Okay, so for sure, next time, more tomatillos in it. I actually like the addition of the apple cider vinegar, so I'll probably do both. And more salt and pepper next time. So let me show you guys the finished product. Now I'm gonna move on to the assembly. And I'm gonna move everything over to my island so that I can sit down and do this. So I'm all set up. I've got my hus, my masa, I have the filling and then sheet trays so that I can lay them on here and transfer them over to the pot once they're ready. I also have a spoon for scooping this and then a spoon for spreading the masa on it. Um, my mom always taught me to use a spoon and then just use the back of it. Uh, I might try a spatula today. We'll see how I'm feeling. I also have some napkins to dry off some of the husks in case they're too wet. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Doing this by myself, without any of my family, without my mom, without my grandma. It feels strange. <laughs> it's making me emotional. I'm sorry if I cry. No, I'm not sorry if I cry. I'm probably gonna cry. Uh, I am just not used to making tamales without them and especially not without my grandma. That's something she was always a part of and I am gonna miss her so much. And that's the point of today, Dia de los Muertos, is to celebrate their life. Um, I don't know if you guys can really see, I'll show it to you guys in a second, but there is my ofrenda, my altar. Um, and in it, I've got, I've got everybody's pictures. Um, I have my grandma, I put some black coffee there for her. Um, I put some beer for my madrina beer for my husband's grandpa. Um, I'm gonna ask my in-laws today to get my husband's grandma's favorite drink. I've got my dogs, my childhood dogs pictures there and their favorite fruit was banana. So I've got a banana there for them. Um, I also have some incense. So on that table, you put things like their favorite foods, their favorite drinks. Um, you put incense. You put flowers. I've got paper marigolds as well as some real marigolds, and then I've got roses there for my madrina too. Um, Cause you wanna put things on there that they can smell from heaven that'll guide them to your home. Um, and it's just, I think it's just a really beautiful tradition to do something like that. <sighs> so I have all those things on there for them. And when these tamales are ready, I'm also gonna put a plate of tamales there for my grandma and my madrina to enjoy. And the food being on there um, just kind of is a way to invite them back home to spend some time with you and have another meal with you. Um, it's believed that the veil between heaven and earth is so thin that God lets all the spirits back to their families to spend time these few days. Um, I believe the first day, November 1st, is for the souls of little kids and then November 2nd is for all the other souls. Um, it's a really huge celebration in Mexico. I think it's so beautiful. I would love to be there for it one day. Um, so for now, I'm just gonna enjoy the celebration here with my little family. All right, so I spread the masa on there and now I put in a little bit of the filling and I'm going to fold it over and bend it and <laughs> Holy cow, guys, I made my first tamale. So I'm feeling it to see which side is the soft side. Obviously, they're both gonna be a little bit rough, but there's one side that's softer than the other, and that's the one I wanna apply the masa to. So in making that second one, I feel like that dough needs a little bit more liquid, so I'm gonna add in a little bit more stock to that. 
I hope that in me showing you guys um, my process of making something for the first time, that it encourages you guys to try new things. Um, even when something seems super intimidating and scary because tamales have always, to me, been something that is absolutely intimidating and scary. Um, that it's okay to give it a try and it's okay if it doesn't come out perfectly because the more that you practice these kinds of things, the better you're gonna get at it. And I'm also gonna try it with a wooden spatula just to see if I can get a little bit quicker with that. Ooh, I like that. And because this is gonna take me a while and I really wanna listen to some music, I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse so that I can knock this out and do it with music. I have 35 here and I clearly still have a whole lot more to do. So I'm gonna take these 35 and I'm gonna move them over to the pot and get these cooking while I work on the rest. In here I have this steamer thingy thing. I don't know what it's called exactly. Um, and I got a penny, which I did a wash and I'm gonna stick it in at the bottom of the pot. And that's a trick my mom just taught me so that if this runs out of water, I hear the sound of that coin bouncing around in the bottom of the pot and I can add more so these can continue to steam because these are going to be in here for about two hours. So I'm going to start adding these into the pot. I stuffed as many as I could in here. A few didn't fit. So now I'm going to add a bunch of these ojas on top just so that it helps keep the steam trapped inside. And then I'm also going to add the lid onto it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on so it gets started while I work on this part. Now, I don't know if my lid is gonna work out very well on this, so if it doesn't, I'm just gonna put foil on top. Lid is on. These are gonna cook for two hours. I'm gonna finish um, filling up the rest so that when these are done, I can add them in. And then when I'm done filling those, then I'm gonna make a salsa and clean up whatever little bit of mess I have left over. Okay, so it's officially been about two hours and 15 minutes since I cooked them. I turned off the pot and I pulled one out and I let it sit. Whenever you first um, turn the pot off on the tamales, they're still gonna feel really mushy and like they're not set. You have to allow them to cool down so that they can firm up and then you'll be able to eat them. Otherwise, when you pull apart the husk, it will just rip away everything with it. So let it cool down a little bit before you go and start eating them. So real quick, I'm gonna show you guys the inside of the pot. <sighs> They look so lovely, so delicious. So these are still not cooked, these are done. And in the meantime, we're gonna eat that one. That's nice. Okay, so don't eat the husk. <laughs> I've had a friend do that before. It was a pretty hilarious story to hear, but you don't eat it. It's literally just to help it hold its shape. So that goes. I'm so excited. I also made a salsa. I didn't share the recipe for it because I just threw a bunch of ingredients together. And I also didn't want to make this video extra lengthy, but I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it on the side. I usually put it on top, but I'm gonna put it on the side and dip it. So that first I can taste it without the salsa. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. My grandma will be so proud of me, you guys. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to keep it together. My grandma would legit be really proud of me. So this is for you, grandma. Oh my God, it's so good, you guys. All right, I'm gonna do it with the salsa now. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. This is so good. My heart and my stomach are so happy right now. Mm. 
This is so good. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know if you like this whole like cook with me thing because I do wanna have you guys in the kitchen more, but I struggle with um, giving you guys measurements because I have to make a recipe a few times to figure out exactly how much I used of it before I can present it to you guys. But I have this Mexican cookbook with these amazing recipes in it and I've tried a few and they are just phenomenal. I would like to do like a series where I am just testing out recipes, Mexican recipes that I myself have not made before so that I can share it with you guys. Um, and then we can just like work together in learning how to cook Mexican cuisine. I will of course share the recipes in that book and the book itself. Um, but just let me know what you guys think about that if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, I am gonna be bringing you guys into the kitchen more often, like I said, to just kind of have a cook with me kind of a day. So I'm still gonna keep doing recipe videos. Those are not gonna go away. This is just kind of like the in-between to keep you guys filled with some recipes. Thanks again for hanging out with me in the kitchen. If you haven't already, I hope that you're willing to hit that subscribe button and stick around with me on my journey to becoming a homesteader. I'll see you in the next one.